Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to Distraction Tactics Film Club. We're week three. How's everyone doing tonight? You all right? Hello, Wacking Phoenix. Hey, Charlotte. Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome along, welcome along. I hope everyone's doing all right. I hope you're all staying distracted. Um, we are, this week, when we're traveling the world, we are in the USA, United States of America. We're talking about the incredible 2004 film, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Thank you to everybody for tuning in and I hope you all enjoyed it. If you were watching it for the first time, if you've never seen it before, um, what did you think? Isn't it amazing? Um, Incredible direction from Michelle Gondry, um, an, an amazing screenplay by Charlie Kaufman. And, um, and well, one of the things that jumps out is the cinematography. And we have cinematographer Ellen Kuras joining us in a bit to talk about the film and to talk about working on it and to talk about her career and uh, what it's like to be a director of photography. Um, so, but before that, I have a new jingle that we made this week for the film club, um, which I'm going to play you now. And it's equally embarrassing as last week's and the week before, um, but I hope that you can laugh at me and listen to it. Distractions. We do want to be in America a little bit, don't we? Um, right, thank you so much for joining. I've got Charlotte here. Hey, how you doing, Charlotte? How's it going? Fantastic. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How's your week been? How are you feeling? You've been, you've had, um, you've had Corona, haven't you? I, I have had the evil virus, but I have been beautifully looked after. And um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that looked after me and all the sweet messages and family and friends and people who just kept me going and oh. that was lovely. I'm glad you're all right and uh, obviously hello to everybody who out there who's um, you know who's feeling rough or going through this and sending yeah. lots of love. Um, I'm so glad that you're all right. Um, yeah so we're here to talk not to like massively pivot but um, we have Ellen sort of waiting to chat and we're very excited to talk to her um, in a second. Um, I wanted you just to maybe maybe give her a bit of an introduction and um, I mean talk, talk about the role of the cinematographer in a yeah. movie is so key that most directors will only work with certain cinematographers. They really they paint with light, and a director like um, Sam Mendes won't work without Roger Deakins or um, Emmanuel Lebetsky. People will wait to do to shoot Gravity for years to have him work with them. And so what's really exciting is to have a female cinematographer and yeah. is phenomenal. She's her first movie that she directed herself was um, nominated for an Academy Award. She's worked with Spike Lee, with Martin Scorsese. Wow, some... amazing. Incredible. And yeah. her work is lyrical and lovely. And like getting an amazingly varied career as well, right? From documentary filmmaking, films like this, concert films, you know, music videos, you name it, like just... Yeah, um... really extraordinary. And I mean, it's such a male dominated world. I don't know if you'll have a chance to ask her, but what, um, when she was um, invited by the American to join in 1999, she was one of only five out of 400 male cinematographers i mean she's extraordinary she's groundbreaking pioneering and 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 her work is just beautiful well should we should we go should we chat to her ah, yes. yeah anything else you want to say really quickly about um eternal sunshine just to introduce it to everybody oh it's just such a favorite of mine it's so uh such a beautiful interrogation of love and memory and really what makes us human so um i loved every second of it i hope you did too me too. We had lots of people. We had uh, 
loads of people asking why we picked the film. Mel, Mel in South Wales, Jelena in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Annika in Germany said, why did you choose this mindfuck of a film? Uh, Renato in Brazil was like, why is this movie still so mind blowing? So lots of people from all over the world loving it and wondering why we picked it and why we picked it to represent America as well. Um, but with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you and come back to you in a bit. I'll speak to you I'll speak to you shortly. Um, and I'm gonna try and bring in um, bring in Ellen with probably equally as successful. Oh, here we go. All right, should be working now. Here we go. Hello, how are you doing? Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Ellen. Hi. It's How's me. it going? How are you? <laughs> how are you doing? It's going okay here. I'm all right. I'm here in upstate New York. Nice. And uh, yeah, I, I, a month ago, and I'm just, it sounds boomy here. That still work? Okay. Ugh. There you go. Oh. All right. Good. So yeah, so I, 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 um, so I came up Thank here so about. Thank you so much for joining us. It's such a pleasure. Wow. Thank you for all of your kind words on uh, what you were saying about me and about the film. And, you know, it's really exciting to talk about the film because the film came out so many years ago, but it's been such a classic film and everybody really gets emotionally attached to the story and to what's happening. And it makes me really happy that people see the cinematography as something that really affects them emotionally. It's so, I mean, as a, as just a, as a film fan, it's so, it's, it's, I don't know, I feel like it's iconic. Um, the work is, it's beautiful. It feels kind of, it feels intimate and homely, uh, but, you know, but beautifully surreal. There's so many, so, so many amazing, memorable moments. And, and I just wanted to ask you, I have so many questions, but I, I you know, I know we don't have all the time <laughs> no. as well. But um, lots of people also sent in their questions too. Um, and, and, uh, Obviously, with, with, this, with this film club, the idea is that we're traveling, because obviously no one can really travel at the moment, we're traveling week by week mm. from country to country. And so we started in England, we went to New Zealand last week and spoke to Taika YCT about Hunt for the World of People. And, uh, and now we're in the US, in New York with you. So thank you so much for joining. Um, and we have people from, from all over the world asking questions, but uh, Laurie Hill from Gloucester wanted to ask you what, what your favorite memory of making the movie was. Cause I imagine there must, it must be impossible to choose, but we were, yeah. <laughs> well, my favorite memory was that we were in March in the third week of March. And, um, and we had been in the bloody cold. I mean, Eternal Sunshine was shot in the coldest weather I've ever experienced in New York. I mean, we froze our butts off. It looked brutal. And what ended, it was really brutal. And, and we hadn't even shot that stuff on the beach yet. So we had one week where we were in the stage, only one week. And the sun came out and everybody thought that spring was going to happen. So we were all excited to go to the beach. We were going to Montauk and we thought, oh, great. We're going to be on the sunshine and the beach and everything's going to be okay again. We're not going to freeze so much. <laughs> and of course, the first day we get there, there's a blizzard. And we all thought, oh my God, we're not going to go out and shoot. And of course we get the call. Oh no, we're going out to shoot. And that's the day that we shot the bed on the beach. So oh, we wow. went out and it was driving snow, a bloody snowstorm. And finally, when it gave up just a little bit, you know, we put the bed on the beach and we did that whole scene on the beach. So, you know, it was by luck that we had had that huge snowstorm. And all of the snow that you see in the movie is real. It's actually real snow. <laughs> and so um, and was, that, was that part of the screenplay? Was, you know, was, was the, was the, was, or was that just luck? Was that just what happened? Well, we talked about making snow, so right. there were lots of discussion about how we would do that. But, it's, you know, it's difficult to make snow when you're doing moving shots and when you're on such a wide expanse of a place. I mean, you can't really control that much. You know, I mean, at least the driving snow that we had. So, you know, we were really lucky in many instances that we had the kind of weather that we did. And that's the thing about Michelle. You know, he's 
he's the type of person where he takes the elements around him and he puts them together as part of the whole, the, the whole um, montage of the scene itself, you know? So, you know, he, yeah. he's almost like, you know, a seven-year-old kid with a pile of construction paper and he sits there and he's like, <laughs> okay, he needs the red paper and he needs the green and you cut things up and all of a sudden you have this incredible, beautiful painting on the wall made with construction paper. And so, you know, we, we were able to work really well together because I've never been this kind of cinematographer who's imposed my way of working on the director. Yeah. I always want to do what the director tries to envision. You know, a lot of directors sometimes don't know how to articulate what they want. They don't know how to get to where what they want. Um, but, but, you know, they have an idea. And so yeah. part of my job has been to, you know, get into their head to understand what it is they're trying to get to, you know, and they may not communicate in the best way, but it's like, it was with Michelle and, you know, we ended up doing pretty amazing things like that, that fence that showed up in the movie. Yeah. Just happened to happen because and I, I, was, I, was reading, I was reading about the uh, the elephant the elephant scene. Apparently, you guys just heard that was happening and had to just run across town to try and get there. Is that is that true? Oh my god, that was mad. So we were just rapping that day. Yeah. And somebody said, "You know what? The elephants are going through the the Midtown Tunnel because the elephants were too big, so they had to walk them through the Midtown Tunnel in order to get into Manhattan, right? Because Manhattan is an island." Yeah, so in order to get there, you'd have to go over a bridge or under in a tunnel. So and we all said, oh, my God, we have to shoot that. And so we grabbed a camera and I grabbed a thousand foot mag. Now, this is 35 millimeters. So a thousand foot mag is huge. Okay. And the battery. And we jumped into the van and we drove up Madison Avenue or wherever we were like crazy. And we oh jumped God. out of the car and we looked down the street and we're like, oh, my God. They're already a block away. So I put the camera on, on my shoulder and we ran as wow. fast as we possibly could. No and we got there at Sixth Avenue and, and Kate looks at Michelle like, what are we gonna do? And, and he, he was just like, just, just go in, just go in. And so <laughs> they improvised as it was. So oh, wow. we managed well, to shoot that look, in about 20 minutes. It was crazy. The shots look amazing. And uh, you know, from, from my, from my tiny experience of being on shoots in, in music videos and things like that, sometimes those sometimes the shots that are completely improvised and just come out of nowhere are, are, the, are the ones that end up being the most memorable and magical. I wanted to ask you about working with Michelle a bit because I was listening to an interview you were doing where you talked about how, how much she pushed you and how, how what working with him was like, but sometimes would like literally <laughs> physically push you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, part of the whole thing with Michelle is that he really wanted it to feel organic. You know, he wanted it to feel alive and not like a bunch of digital effects. And that yeah. was key to him because the movie that he had done before, and I think a lot of people have seen it by now, called Human Nature. You know, the Human Nature was very, or very much about artifice. So it was very constructed. It was yeah. in a stage, constructed in the stage. The lighting was very, you know, time consuming. And, you know, and Michelle doesn't want he's the kind of person where he wants to go, you know, he doesn't want to wait a whole lot of time. And so that experience for him really deeply impacted him. So when he got to eternal sunshine, he said he wanted to do, well, he didn't literally tell me this. I figured it out. But <laughs> he wanted to do everything opposite. So okay. everything opposite of human nature. So it had to be organic. Everything was organic. <laughs> so it ended up being, I'm going to go get my batteries. Um, it ended up being really quite a challenge because he didn't want me to use movie lights. He wanted me to, you know, he wanted me to use lights that were available. And I said, you know, that's great. But at the same time, you know, I need to be able to see what we're seeing because we were shooting in film. We weren't shooting in digital. And, you know, when you're shooting in yeah. digital, there's so much more leeway now of what you can get away with. But for, um, but for film, you need to get an exposure. Sorry. 
There we go. You guys all know what this means. Okay, plugging in. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, so, so what I ended up having to do was I had to come up with different ways of, of lighting the scene, but, but making pretend that there are film lights and tricking in a way. So, yeah. you know, Michelle wanted me to turn on all the lights and, and all the practicals, all the available lamps in the room. And I was like, I can't do that. And he was like, Ellen, why not? You, you know, just, you know, <laughs> just try it. So I was like, okay. So I turned on all the lights in the room and I had to laugh because I, was, I brought him in and I was like, Michelle, this is what it's going to look like. And, I, and he goes, oh, and I go, yeah, it looks like a lamp shop. So, so, you know, it's like if you turn every lamp on, there's no lighting, you know? So I had to come up with ways of cutting what? holes in the yeah. backs of some of the lampshades so that, and turning them away from camera so it would allow more light to go on the more actors. Light. Yeah, I had, I had little light bulbs. hidden everywhere on that set which had little scenes that feel like they're almost shot by torch by torchlight and and you know yes. both both inside and outside the things that are there on soundstage and out kind of in the world were, were those shots like literally just like spots and the camera or yeah wow it, yeah so that that idea of that the spotlight idea which i called the memory light the reason why i did that was because all of eternal sunshine takes place in the mind. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, the entire film could have taken place in a blank, really. You know what I mean? It's when you think about memory in the mind and there's no, there's, you know, there's no syntax, there's no beginning, middle and end. And, and, and as you see in the movie, things repeat, you know, so you don't in the mind, you could go anywhere. Yeah. So I realized it was like, what is it like, uh, getting into a person's mind. For me, what's important about lighting and important about camera is that it means something for what you're trying to say in the story, you know, that, yeah. that the lighting has meaning. So I thought, what is the best way to show that, that, I, you know, that idea in your head, how to get into your mind's eye? So that's why I was talking to Michelle about it, and we both came up with we were trying to figure out what that was and he showed me a clip from a French movie and it was basically about 30 seconds not even 30 seconds it was like 10 seconds and it was just uh, one shot of the camera was in the car and it was at night and it was driving along a country road and the headlights swerved along the side of an embankment and I, and I saw it and I was like exactly I go that's it I go, that's the memory light. It has to be like the light at the end of the tunnel. It's like, you know, when you think yeah. about a memory and you're trying to recall it, that's what it feels like. So that's what we were trying yeah. to make the, uh, the lighting. I had to come up with how to, how to do that then. So I was using like bicycle lights on top of the camera. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it would be a torch or a flashlight. Sometimes in the exterior scenes, because they were bigger, I needed to use a, a, a light called a parkan. So, right. you know, it was always about, you know, what you see and then what you don't see. So the light would always fall off into darkness around it. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it, it's, it is, it's amazing. And it, it, just the fluidity of the shots and, and the way that you lit them all. It's such, it's so amazing. And um, I'd I, I like, I, I feel like I've taken up a lot of your time, so I do I do want to wrap it up, but um, I just want to ask you one more. <laughs> this is probably quite a tricky question, but from from someone called Fernanda <laughs> in Mexico, she was mm -hmm. asking if you could if you could choose one frame from the movie, what would it be? And that and I'm sure it's an impossible question, but is there one that sticks out to you? 
Yes, there is one that I really love very much. And that's when uh, Kate and, and uh, Jim were on a sled. And it was during what I call the chase sequence when she's, she's running away from being erased. And they're on the ice and the sled and they're both sitting on the sled and it gets pulled away from you into the, into the darkness. I don't know why, but that's such a visceral image for me. It's always stayed with yeah. me. Yeah, there are so, so many. There are so many. <laughs> I think it's a haunting image of, of Kate Winslet being pulled away. Um, I think I was thinking about the um, what, the shots. You know, the shot the shot of them lying on on the ice, and yeah. I was wondering if, how planned that was or not. And when you shot it, if you thought about how iconic that would be, and the fact that it would be the poster and it would be in all the kind of imagery, and if 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 that was planned or if it was something that happened and it was one of those amazing eureka moments and and just how amazing that must feel having a shot that you composed being you know being something that then represents the film in such an iconic way well you know it's funny because you're doing 24 of those every second so yeah. <laughs> so you know i mean for that that scene and that shot i mean we're actually on a frozen lake we traveled for that and we had a crane on the lake uh... And so wow. when we got there and we were looking, I said to Michelle, he said, you know, it would be really great. Just crack it. This is kind of a metaphor for their relationship, you know? So, yeah. so I said, you know, we wanted to do an overhead shot. So I said, let's do it here because it's such a great, a great image. It's such a great opportunity. But, you know, we never know what, what ends up becoming the poster image. So, you know, yeah. I was really pleased to see that because it really – and people, you know, it's a, it's about the relationship. It's about visual metaphor. Yeah, it was so it's so beautiful, and it says so much just in that one image. Um, and then thank you so much for joining us. I can't we can't thank you enough. For me, from everyone in the film club, thank you for for coming mm -hmm. and chatting tonight. It's been amazing, and you are, it's such an honor. You're incredible. Thank you so so much. So thank you so much. It's been an honor to be here. It's so great. Good. Thanks, Dan. Good, good, luck, good, luck with, good luck with everything you're working on and stay safe. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Oh, wow. That was awesome. Um, I feel very lucky to have been able to just speak to her. Um, anyone have any comments or questions? Chuck them below. I'm just going to get Charlotte back because I'm sure she has a lot to say about that. Um, Oh wow! She had... what an amazing, what an amazing person. How you doing? How you doing, Charlotte? Hi. How's it going? He's just a legend. And his... What a legend! I know. I know. Fantastic. So nice for time. Yeah. I um... want. I, I want to. I, I. I want to be her. I want to have her job. Um, I, I hope so. At the um, Betchdale, weren't we? Yes. Of course. The, um... the Betchdale test. Betchdale. We're... Do you want to um, remind everyone what that is, just in case they've forgotten? In case you missed it, it's um, the three points. Um, does the film have um, two or more named characters, female characters, who talk to one another, but yep. not about them? I'm afraid that this fails. Ah, oh, it fails. But I think it's because it's all from Joel's point of view, and it's really his love story. And I think that the female characters in this film are so vibrant. And I think yeah. the Dunn character is the person that moves the story on to the next level. Yeah. And, and we're in love with Clementine and her vibrancy. And there's a female cinematographer. So, so we're going to move cool. over. That. But, yeah. Um, and also, and, and like you pointed out when we were chatting earlier, that... Um, <laughs> The Kirsten Dunst's character, like you said, how she comes in and, you know, her actions and her sort of defiance has this huge effect on not only the characters in the film, but everybody else who's had their memories erased. Um, and, you know, and therefore she's pretty, you know, pretty pivotal. I mean, and maybe another example of a film where the female characters maybe are lacking slightly in representation, but make up for it in terms of importance in in the characters lives i don't know i'm, I'm not sure but um I'm going to try and address that as the club goes on by choosing a film by um a female director with free, key female protagonists and and look at it from different angles you know yeah for sure next week of course next week um all right so i wanted to like chat to you about a few a few things you were going to talk about the idea of the manic pixie dream girl um 
and uh, about that sort of film trope, if it exists, um, if, if, yeah, lovely sign. Lovely sign. Beautiful. So this is another sort of trope. This was um, a critic called Nathan Rabin um, thought of it as, as a sort of, about a kind of kooky girl. I think he, to be exact, he said um, it was about, um, it was, he, he coined it about um, to expose sexist culture, but it's now been used, of course, to reinforce sexist culture. But he, he talks about how a, a, a sort of kooky girl would teach broodingly soulful young men to embrace life and infinite mysteries and adventures. And yeah. um, I think, I guess Clementine does fall into that category on one level, except that Charlie Kaufman is such a genius screenwriter that he pushes that whole idea. And he gives her right at the end of the movie this fantastic line, yeah. like, which are, um, too many guys think I'm a concept or I complete them or I'm gonna make them alive, which is no bad thing. But I'm just a fucked up girl who's looking for my own peace of mind, so don't assign me yours. So in, in a way she repudiates that um, manic pixie thing. Yeah, I, do, I don't think she fits that trope at all. Um, I think that at the beginning we're meant to sort of almost think that she's that person and then it's completely flipped on its head. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk to you about, I don't know why holding up that sign, I'm not gonna play the anchor. No, I'm not gonna play the anchor. Um, Play. I, uh, I, um, I want him to play anchor because it's all about mind and memory and having. So let's talk about memory then. Let's talk about memory. Um, we have some, some, some questions. Uh, Kinga in Poland says, Why are memories so important, even the painful ones? Yeah, well, shall I ask you that question? No, I'm asking you. <laughs> I, think, um, I think they define us. I think that's what makes us human. And um, I mean, I. I've been thinking about what some of my, the, one of my most painful memories ever in the whole world was giving birth. And um, I'm lucky enough to have four children, but it's also my best memory. So it's yeah. my physically most painful, but my emotionally most joyous. And I, and I guess that love changed yeah. those two sides, those contradictory things that we, we go willingly back into falling in love with someone when we know that they're going to potentially hurt us and that yeah. part of that pain and is, is written in every memory that we make. Um, um, I've got a question. Um, okay. Uh, oh. um, why are memories so important? Have you asked me that one? Okay, do bad memories help make us people, Claire in Essex said? Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, probably. I'm an inarticulate idiot, so I, 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 uh, I, I'm going to say yes. I think everything, all experiences come to, what am I doing? I don't know, I can't, I can't talk about this. But I do, I, lots of people are talking about the, uh, the ethics of having memories deleted and, um, and the importance of pain in life. And it, I guess it all shapes you, doesn't it? Or kind of makes you who you are. Would you erase someone from your life? And why? Says Beatrice in Brazil. Yeah, I would. I've got a list which I probably shouldn't sign. What about you? Uh, Donald Trump. <laughs> probably. Um, I mean, I'd, yeah. <laughs> well, who knows? Um, <laughs> I um, have loved speaking to you again. Thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go chat to Kyle for a bit now. Charlotte, thank you. Oh, I can't hear you. you you're gone. Play. Oh, you want to play the anchor? Play. Okay. Will you play? Uh, uh, play May play okay, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but this is film club. It's not. It's not song club. If that was a thing. Um. All right. I'm gonna reach Carl. But um, you guys this week have been amazing and um have sent in lots of pictures of you holding up the uh the the sign that we made. So we put together this little video.
right. So, uh, yeah, thanks all. Thanks so much to everybody who sent sent um, sent in pictures themselves from all over the world. Um, I want to say hi to people to the beanery in Portugal. Oh, hey Kyle, how you doing? Oh, hey guys, it's just me. Surprise guest. Three times in a week. Surprise guest. You thought, um, who, you know, who would have thought, you thought I wasn't going to be here, but I am. That's the surprise. People were checking their watches, being like, the half hour's nearly up. We haven't heard from Kyle. He must not be coming. Maybe they're trying to like reserve him to keep it sort of exciting and sweet, but hey, you're back. I'm here. I'm here for you. How are um, you, dude? How's, yeah, you, how's, your, really... how's your last week in isolation been? Oh, same again. Just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, although... Repeat. Do you know what, though? It's really interesting. Um... I had never watched this film before. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what did you think? Um, it's so trippy. It's nuts, isn't it? It's, it's amazing. like really trippy, really dark, really raw. Yeah. Um, and really good. At, I think really amazing at going from uh, at sort of encapsulating the idea of a relationship and uh, how people can go from moments of, of frivol like joy and normality into like the meanest, bitterest. To comp most complicated yeah. darkness, yeah. Um, and like the flow between the scenes, like like the different sets where, and the, the people moving seamless, like Jim moving seamlessly in between and yeah. meeting different versions of, of Kate in, in different, it was just, uh, yeah, I loved it, I loved what it. What did you think about, cause obviously when we were growing up, Jim Carrey was like the mask, um, the Riddler, he was, you know, liar, liar, he was yeah. Ace Ventura, he was like, sort of this massive comedy yeah. icon legend and this is an example of him doing like a serious role how did you find it so i, I always feel like that when when people when people go serious after being like mainly sort of comedy driven or like quite sort of jolly or whatever yeah but like i feel like it's i feel like it, it hits harder like ricky gervais or uh, like um I don't know, like Will Smith or like, I don't know, like, like people like that who, who are generally quite up, upbeat and funny, yeah. when they take it serious, it's, I, I don't know, because I'm, cause you're not expecting it, it kind of, it, it, it gets you, gets you a bit deeper, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and I loved it. And the, uh, cry, the crying clown always takes you by surprise. Yes. Um, so I've got a bunch of questions I want to throw at you. Erem from Saudi Arabia says, on a scale of one to 10, how hard did you cry? Do you know what? I, I thought that I would cry and I didn't. Yeah. Um, but you didn't. You heartless, not, heartless fuck. I'm heartless. I'm heartless. Um, I laughed a lot. You know, when they were going through the hard times, it was really fun. Um, can we talk about the? Can we talk about the uh, the kitchen scene where he's a child? He's and, a child. And when he's being bathed in the sink and how amazing it was. I really wanted to ask Ellen about that, but we ran out of time. But yeah, how? I mean, but like because they just built a huge sink for them to, for him <laughs> to be in. I um, will know where that sink is now. I want it. I, I want to live house in that sink so I much. Bathe in it every um, night. That that scene was amazing. It was incredible. I loved it. That whole thing. Um, which Clementine Clementine hair color is your favorite from Kinga in Poland and Lucia in Edinburgh? Tangerine. Tangerine. Fair. Yeah. No, that's and that's also that's the happy times as well. Exactly. It's the happy times because blue with the sadness, but the tangerine was a nice warm, the happy ones. Yeah. How about you? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with you. It's, thank you. Thank it's you very much. the same for me. Cause well, yeah, those are the moments. Those are the sort of tender. Everything's still kind of real, but believable. But there's, there's a bit more lightness there, and Absolutely. it's a bit less harrowing in those moments. Uh, name it. This is a really good question from Ethan in Sacramento, USA. Name an embarrassing moment you would hide in to save Clem. An embarrassing moment in your life. Like obviously, he had him being caught by his mum, doing things to himself, reading a comic book. He was, you know, being bullied as a kid, killing a pigeon. You know, the, 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 the list, the, you know, it, there are many the examples of the awkward, awkwardness mm. of growing up and being a kid. What, um, it, what would yours be? Hey, I mean, hey, it's a good list. And if I ever wanted to share an embarrassing, <laughs> embarrassing, embarrassing story of, my, of myself, like now is the time I would choose to do that, you know? Yeah. Do you um, want to do it on the internet with people watching? Um... I don't know. I've got a few. I, I remember this one time um, I, I was around my, around my, um, my uncle and auntie's house we, and I have cousins and like, I, I'm the oldest cousin. I'm the cool older cousin, right? And so all of the, there was, I had a bounce castle because it was a birthday party um, and I thought I'd just go for a, a front flip. Uh, on the bounce castle, I did a front flip, front flip, land, and I need myself in the face. I got a concussion, like genuine concussion. Amazing. I was That's being sick for the rest of the day. Um, and I think 
it was just because I, I was like the big strong cousin, and all of a sudden. Well, that's then, the thing. You've got two big three boots. You thought you were. You thought you were bigger and cooler than you were. This is it. It's probably and the that, moment. The moment when you accepted that you were the big cool cousin. That's when you needed your downfall, and it came no, for you. Yeah, 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 you yeah, hard. yeah. Know your place, Kyle. Um, someone Tamara in Sweden said, "I wanted to ask you, Dan, what's your favorite part of the movie?" Oh, it's hard. Oh. I think some of the cinematography. I think the bit where he walks through the bookshop and all the lights turn off. I love the scene towards the end where they're in the bookshop again and all the. The, the the spines of the books turn backwards just yes. loads of the, loads for me it's loads of the cinematography i love all the scenes on the ice where she's being pulled away the the, the surreal moments the there's skip one from bit, one thing to another there's one bit kind of um in the middle of like um switching between sort of like different memories um they're sat in this in the in the front room together and he hears yeah. something in the kitchen and he walks into the kitchen and as he does he walks behind the telly and his oh, body yes, shows yes. Up on the telly yes and he's and he, is he, he's eating cereal right yeah. And what's happening on the TV course was that, I, yeah, I, wanted to, I so wanted to ask, I wanted to ask Ellen about that so badly. Amazing, well. amazing. So, that, there are just so many beautiful little touches like that. Tiny little and bit. probably really subtle special effects. The, bit, the moment where the car drops as they're walking down the road. So, yeah, there are so many good bits. Um, there's a question from Anisha in Sweden. How do you prefer to keep memories, digitally or with physical items? Which I thought was really good. Because I, I, personally, I have started more and more like quite obsessively taking photos on my phone that never go anywhere. Yeah. But they just live on my phone as a kind of diary of, of everything that I've done. Yes. Uh, and I think these days people always assume that you're going to post them somewhere and I rarely do, but they're yes. more just to like, well, you know, the idea of being able to flick back through your life. Like, what was I doing that day? Um, I feel like, like, you know, it's, it's, it's just so much easier to have pictures on your phone. But like um, having like having like actual tan tangible stuff that, that like sits around your house and you walk around and you see them and go, oh, that time well, I went to Berlin with whoever or whatever like that. But um, like I, I really find myself on my phone just breezing through the photos. Yeah. So I think like for, just for ease, getting pictures is is a nice quick way to do it. But I feel like it's more meaningful to get a little little token from that from that time, like yeah. a little. I don't know, little, just a little like, thing. Like our friend Woody gets magnets from every country that he goes to. So he does. That's cool. I know. Um, yeah, and he, yeah, he's had to buy another two fridges to put them all on. Speaking um, of Woody, if all, if, yeah, that's true. Um, if, all but one, if all but one memory of Bastille were to be erased, which would you keep from Sophie in Holland? What's the one thing you would keep? The one memory? I'll do this one. Because then I would know why I had the only this one. Yeah. Mm? Do you like sure. that? Nice, nice, nice way of evading. <laughs> nice way to evade picking okay. your favorite memory. But, but, but dude, know. I'm going to take it. I'll, I'll take it as a huge compliment that this is your favorite. This is your favorite memory. Just um, me and you. Fuck the others. <laughs> yeah. Screw them. Get out. <laughs> um, but I think, I think I've, what else have we got? There's Catalina in Chile asked, why do they stay together? I mean, they were pretty toxic. But I think that's the point. Yeah. It's that bit, that, that bit at the end in the corridor when, 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 uh, he, when he, he, he's kind of saying, like, this is what I'll do. And, like, and it's all bad. And she's like, yeah. And then in yeah. time, I'll get bored of you. And, like, and then I'll, I'll get bored and, then, and we'll then kind of, and whatever. And he goes, okay. And it's like, yeah, it's that kind it's of. So nice. It's that it's it's that weird acceptance of, yeah. Sometimes it's going to be shit, and we're going to do this, but, but like, like you know, in spite of all that, let's still do it. Yeah. It's like a it's like a, yeah. It was it was just it was just really powerful. It's just it's just it's just really amazing. That is that is an amazing bit. Um yeah, and, and you know also like and and feel it's just feel, it feels really believable, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. And also, um, you know, like going going for a breakup, you always focus on like like loads of the bad stuff, and so. Like and and then to, like towards the end of the of the memory erasing, he starts hitting all the good memories that he ha that he had, and yeah, I don't know. It was just um, I just give, I guess give it another shot. Yeah, yeah, well said, man. Um, Kit in Australia asked if the film inspired the Good Grief music videos because he said that they said uh, they're on the same wavelength, um, and. Just before I let you go, I'm just going to talk about that. I think quite quite a lot of our videos are inspired by people like Michelle Gondry and and that kind of weird cinematography. The other thing I was thinking about to horribly draw things back to ourselves um, was when I was watching this film again, 
the bit where he's going through the house and collecting all the items and all the all the all the sort of the mugs and the memories and the those physical things that remind him of people sort of made me think a little bit of uh, things lost in the fire which is about the idea that all those things the ticket stubs and the diaries and all of these the sort of physical remnants of of a, a relationship or a friendship or whatever, those things that totally. come, come to embody those memories physically. And, that, and then there, is there something in destroying them that is kind of final? And that's, I guess, what happens in this film. Uh, yes. But yeah, I guess to answer, to answer your question, Kit, uh, films like this are very inspiring for us and our videos and the songs and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, Kyle, thank you so much. Oh, um, pleasure. Thanks for being our surprise guest. And um, I hope you like the jingle this week. I tried to I make it, tried to make it feel, feel like the film but obviously also reference a really famous musical. Yeah, it was really good. It was really <laughs> yeah. okay, wasn't it? Um, um, yeah. Uh, I was worried when I did it that people would be like, oh, well, obviously they'll have them as guests. And I was like, yeah, fucking <laughs> um, um, uh, if, you're ever stuck for, if you're ever stuck for a surprise guest, you know where I'll be sat on the same fucking sofa. Thank you. Look at these, these, you. People, these people sent in, uh, people from all over the world sent in their... Wow. G there's Jiba from uh, from Venezuela. These guys are in Guatemala. How nice is that? Julia in Italy. Wow. Uh, and Alex in Mexico. Um, so yeah. Anyway, like I'm gonna play you out if that's all right with the uh, with the jingle again. Please do. And um, dude, I'll see you soon. Thank you so Thank much. You safe. Take care. Bye. <laughs>
I mean, I've got plenty, so yeah, I'll, go, I'll go through the list. We, we, we all do, hey, we all do, hey. Um, right, I'm going to leave you. Thank you so much for joining. I'm glad you liked it. Um, okay, I just have one thing. Okay, what's that? Um, can you play the anchor? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in, film, in Film Club. Charlotte said that she thought it, it, it summed up the film for her and wanted me to play it, but... Um, uh m maybe maybe okay <laughs> it really well okay i will i will do it we're just gonna we're gonna speak to someone we're gonna speak to someone called erin in florida next okay. um and then maybe i'll play it before i leave everybody alone but kat thank you so much sorry about last week no worries thank okay. you for having me look after yourself yeah. see you later I'm going to try and get Erin back. Let me just wait a second. Sorry that that completely shat itself. <laughs> um, right, we are nearly done, guys. Thank you all so much for joining this week. I'm going to get Erin in. Where has she gone? Um, uh, internet connection here, which doesn't seem to want to sustain anything ever. Um, shut itself again but let's just play the end hey erin how you doing hi i'm good how are you good thanks where are you you're in florida right yeah i'm i'm by uh like st pete tampa area nice how are you doing are you, are you um looking after yourself are you all in lockdown yeah um i'm actually pretty lucky i'm still working from home oh. um we've shut down our offices and so i'm able to to still get my work done, um, but yeah, staying safe. It just started raining oddly, so yeah. Oh, nice. Thank you so much for joining us, um, and I'm glad, I'm glad you're right. Glad you're able to still work. It must be nice to be able to keep busy. Um, so, Eternal so Sunshine. What did you think? It is one of my favorite movies. It's um, it, it it lands on two lists of mine. Um, it's one of those films that makes me happy. Yeah. But it's also one of those films that when it ends, I will start it back over again just to rewatch it a second time. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, it, just, it means a lot to it me. It is so beautiful. And also, obviously, it lends itself to that because it's kind of cyclical as well. I'm going to let I'm gonna let you talk about the film. And I'm just going to show some pictures from it because that feels like a semi-pro thing to do, even though I'm not a pro. Oh, look, there's a picture. <laughs> there's a picture from the film. What? How does this make you feel? I love how that. How does this make you feel? And um, it just, it makes me feel hopeful because it's, I know it's towards the end. This one, again, still hopeful because he's finding her no matter what. Ooh, I'm back to the wrong one. Shit, scroll the wrong way. Oh, I love this one. This is kind of, <laughs> this is a really famous shot from the film, right? It's very sweet just to have that embrace and almost like she's watching over I'm him. I'm not learning from my mistakes. This was the shot we were chatting to Ellen about. What did you think, uh, did you enjoy um, hearing from Ellen earlier? I, I loved hearing those behind the scenes stories because one of my favorite scenes is seeing the beach full of snow and it just, yeah, it just seems so obscure to me because I'm from Florida and the beach is supposed to be a sunny, fun place yeah. and it's just a completely different contrast. Yeah, no, it is, it's, it's, it's um, stunning and it was amazing to hear that, um, you know, they hadn't initially kind of, you know, they'd been almost planning on fake snow and, and and, and not 100% knowing that they would have the amazing opportunity to have real stuff. But, God, that must have been a nightmare to shoot in, right? <laughs> yeah, but I'm glad it worked out. It it was it felt way more authentic that way. Yeah, no, it really did. It really did. Um, well, I'm glad you love the movie. Um, have, you, are you, are you, have you seen a lot of other, like, Charlie Coffin films as well? Um, I saw Be Kind, Rewind. Yeah. Um, well, sorry, Michelle Gondry. I've seen Be Kind, Rewind and... Um, 
the Dave Chappelle's block party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that I saw that in theaters. A friend of mine, we were just talking about that. Um, and then Charlie Kaufman. I was just looking it up on Google. I can't remember what movies I've seen of his, but um, uh, yeah, it's I'm a huge nerd for movies, yeah. oh, so I have a long list of ideas <laughs> of movies to watch. I love um, Being John Malkovich was the first film of his that I saw, and I thought it was so good, yeah, amazing, um, and adaptation as well. Um, I love just the way that he sort of it's, his films are so human, and they take in like the real pedestrian bits of life. But there's also this kind of romantic, surreal, twisted element to them too. Um, I had this. I got sent this picture just before we started from Monica in Kentucky, who um, appears to be a physician as well. So I wanted to shout out to healthcare workers around the world for doing an amazing, amazing job at the moment and keeping so many people alive yeah. and safe and as, as well as can be. Um, but yeah, thank you so, so much for joining us. Um, this so, Erin, thanks. I appreciate this. Oh, thanks for being it, here. It's been fun. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, I do have, I have one thing. Yeah, what's that? I have a post note with it. Um, I think Charlotte <laughs> would like you to play the anchor. <laughs> Um, okay. So, <laughs> okay. I had it I will. written down so I wouldn't forget. Okay. <laughs> I will, I will, yeah, I will play the anchor then, um, to say, yeah, to say thank you to Charlotte, because she's been so amazing. She's our, like, resident film expert, and she's, um, done so much for, um, for the film club. So, yeah, I will play it for her, <laughs> even though it feels really weird. Thank you. She, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> All right, thanks so much for joining, and I will see, see you soon. Take care, look after yourself. Thank you, you too. All right. Um, all right. Charlotte, can't believe you got me playing a song in Film Club. Um, it's really embarrassing. Um, all right, I'm going to play the anchor for you guys, and for Charlotte mainly. Um, one sec. All right, it feels like a mad cheat, but um, it's also on the anchor. Oh, that fucked it. Let those fools be loud, let the alarms ring out, cause you caught the wall. Let the days be dark, let me hate my work Cause you cut through all the noise Bring me some hope A wandering into my mind Something to hold on to Morning, noon, day or night Cause you were the light that is blinding me the anchor that I tie to my brain Cause when it feels like I'm lost at sea You're the song I sing again and again All the time, all the time I think of you all the time That the parties end so we lose our friends Cause you cut through all let the years roll on till the static comes Cause you cut through all the noise Bring me some hope I'm wandering into my mind Something to hold on to Morning, noon, day or night Cause you were the light It is blinding me the anchor that I tie to my brain Cause when it feels like I'm lost to see You're the song I sing again and again All the time, all the time I think of you all the time All the time, all the time I think of you all the time
something to hold on to morning day or night is you the light that is blinding me you're the anchor that i tie to my brain cause when it feels like i'm lost at sea you're the song i sing again and again all the time all the time i think of you all the time all the time, all the time, I think of you all the time. Um, thank you very much for joining. Sorry to sing at the end of Distraction Tactics. That was because of Charlotte. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining this week. Uh, cheers for watching Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind. We. I would like to announce that our film next week is from France. We are going to France um, and we are going to see, I'm just getting the post a few, hence why I'm being really slow. Uh, one second. Here we go. Um, we're going to see an amazing, amazing French film called, called Girlhood um, from France. Uh, it has one of the best uses of, uh, Diamonds by Rihanna. It's such an amazing, amazing film. Um, I really, really recommend it. Please try and seek it out uh, if you can. But I will leave you. Um, I'll leave you with this week's jingle. The last time you'll ever hear it. Thank you for joining us this week. Um, see you soon. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you so much, Ellen, for, for joining and being so uh, so amazing and interesting and um, for giving us your time. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you to everybody that's joined. Thank you for everyone sending in your questions, um, your comments, um, and thank you for watching. See you soon. Lots of love. Take care. Stay safe and um, see you soon. Bye.